Hi, I'm John Griffin, Microscopy Imaging Officer at the Australian Cancer Research Foundation's Cancer Biology Imaging Facility at the Institute for Molecular Bioscience on the University of Queensland's St. Lucia campus. Welcome back to our tutorial series on microscopy and image processing. In this installment, we'll be looking at image stacks and hyperstacks in image J. A basic photomicrograph represents a change in some physical property across two dimensions. For optical microscopy, this property is generally something like brightness or optical density. Many microscopes also use grayscale cameras or other detectors that don't collect the color of light falling on them. Thus, we get a flat image with one color. The objects we're st studying are often more complex than this. So how do we record and represent other kinds of information like 3D structure, changes over time, or information on different colors? The answer is we use an image stack, multiple images displayed sequentially in the same window. If the images were collected sequentially through the depth of an object, that stack is called a Z stack. If the images were collected sequentially through time, the stack is called a time lapse. Stacks of images representing different colors viewed through the microscope can be put together as well and are called lambda stacks. The lambda stands for wavelength. A greatly simplified version of this is a stack with a few images taken at different wavelengths representing discrete channels of information. We've already looked at a stack of this type in our first video, but let's take another look. So we've got our channel stack open in image J, and you can see that we can only see one channel at a time. Using the channel slider labeled C, at the bottom of the image, we can select which channel we wish, wish to view. This image has three channels, but viewing them one at a time can keep us from seeing the relationship between them. We've looked at a couple of ways of viewing them all at once, but as the saying goes, there's more than one way to skin a cat. There's a quicker way we can see all of our channels at once. From the menu, we'll select Image, Color, and then Make Composite. Now all of our channels are visible at once, but we can adjust them separately. Notice that if I bring up the Brightness and Contrast dialog and adjust the maximum only the channel that's selected using the channel slider is affected. So I can adjust just my red, but my green and my blue don't change. Or now if I switch to the green channel, you'll see that that change is reflected in the color of the histogram in the brightness and contrast dialog. It's also reflected in the text at the top of the image window and in the outline around the image window itself. So now I'm sure I'm working with the green, so I can change the brightness of my green channel. And if I move to the blue, I can brighten up my blue channel as well. Now notice that this image is not ready to print. If you want an image you can submit to a journal or use in a presentation, you'll need to follow the directions in the earlier tutorials in this series. Now, another kind of stack you may encounter is a Z stack. Here, we've got a Z stack that was acquired on a personal delta vision deconvolution microscope. The subjects are cultured mammalian cells stained with Alexafluor 488 phylloidin to label the actin cytoskeleton. Again, at the bottom of the image is a slider, and this time it's not labeled. And we can use this to virtually focus up and down through the specimen and select the plane of focus in which we are most interested. But what if we want to show information about all of the planes of focus at once? In that case, we'll want to make a Z projection. To do this, from the menu, we'll select Image, Stacks, and Z Project, which brings up our Z Projection dialog box. We can select a number of different types of projections, but the ones we're after for fluorescence images are either 
maximum intensity, or some slices. Both of these will flatten our Z stack so we can see the whole thing at once, but they work in different ways and produce somewhat different results. Neither one is more correct or better than the other, and each one will show certain features better than the other. Try them both out and see which works for you. So for example, if we select maximum intensity, which is probably the more commonly used of the two, and select OK, we get an image showing all of our information in focus at once, more or less. What it's actually doing is finding the brightest pixel in the X and Y directions for each Z position. It's retaining that particular brightness. So that's the maximum intensity projection. That's why it's called that. It saves the maximum intensity at each X and Y position. There are other ways of displaying your 3D data. Another standard way is to use orthogonal views, showing three slices through a single point, each at right angles to the others. To obtain this kind of view from the menu, select Image, Stacks, and Orthogonal Views. This will give you three image windows. One, the standard view from above, and the others are views from the sides. Each image has two yellow lines in it showing where the other two views are in relation to it. We can navigate through these slices using the slice slider in the main window to select the plane of focus in the main window. And you'll notice that the one of the yellow lines in both the XZ and YZ image windows is changing to indicate our changing Z position. And we can click in the main window to select the point the other two views will intersect. So if I click on this bright point here, you'll see that now we're looking at a slice in the YZ window that passes down through that bright focus, and a slice in our XZ window that passes through that focus as well. And if I close these two windows, we lose our orthogonal views, but we can look at another tool as well called the Reslice tool. The Reslice tool works in a similar way, but will change the view of our data to be along the X or Y axis instead of along the Z axis. This tool can be found again under the menu, image, and stacks, and then we go to reslice. Now we'll have to tell it where we want to start. So we can start at the top, bottom, left, or right. Usually we'll start at the top or the left. And usually I tell it to avoid interpolation. If we click OK, you can see it goes to work. And now I can scroll through my image basically from the top of this image. So the most positive Y, the largest Y here, down to the smallest Y here. The bottom of my stack. seems to be the top of this stack. And the top of this stack is the bottom down here. Now, that's probably enough for now. Next time we'll look at time lapses and hyperstacks. Remember, you can leave questions, comments, and suggestions in the comments below, or if you work at the IMB, drop us an email or come up to Level 6 for a chat. Thanks again for watching.